there may be a way to get to heaven. Since some point, I started thinking like that. At the very least, I didn't think about it as a young child. And the heaven I'm talking about here may not be the same heaven my mother was talking about. But anyhow, at some point, I started thinking in such a way. When I say at some point, when I'm vague about the time it occurred, it is not particularly because I'm unsure of when it happened. Nothing of the sort. Rather, I know quite clearly and with great confidence when that moment was. It was when that witch, Enya the Hag, presented me the items, the bow and arrow, and I gained my stand, the world. To be precise, it was when my stand ability, the world, awoke. The ability to control time. Like gears meshing, when that ability that was incredible even for me awoke, I simultaneously was convinced. No, I suppose saying convinced is going too far. I only say that because it's easier to understand that way, though it's not actually how things were. At that point, it was purely a maybe level of thinking. But I thought it. I thought it. That there may be a way to get to heaven. I thought in that manner. So when I say at some point, I'm saying that I started at that time and place. But looking back on it now, ever since then I've been searching for a way to get to heaven. For that purpose. I even thought that I was alive solely for that purpose. I thought that was my goal in life. At the very least, the four years I've spent on the surface after living for nearly a hundred years at the bottom of the sea have been all for the sake of going to heaven. I need to see heaven. I must go to heaven. I thought in such a manner, did I not? So it's most likely that I started thinking it ever since I gained my stand. That there may be a way to get to heaven. And I searched for it. Perhaps in that mother's place, in my foolish mother's place, I'm trying to go to heaven. Perhaps I'm trying to see the scenery of heaven and report it to my mother. No. That's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Even now I think of that mother of mine as foolish. Irrecoverably, hopelessly foolish. She lived in that manner. It's no surprise she died. If I'm speaking about her, I could say that it was death from pushing herself too far and overwork. I could say she was beaten to death by my father's routine violence, even if those weren't it. Whatever it was with the way that woman lived, it was likely impossible for her to live a long life. She died while being laughed at. She died while being beaten. But even so, until the end, she never blamed anyone or begrudged anyone. Dio, no matter what happens, live nobly and with pride. If you do that, you'll surely be able to go to heaven. An implausible idea to the end. Until the very end, that woman kept saying that to me. Even at the point of death, she said that. I think that was perhaps a very sinful thing and such. I do think that. I don't think it's specifically because it was done to me, but in that town that even hell was preferable to, to force one's own child to live righteously was mostly just abuse. Compared to that, I do believe my father was more honest. For that town, he was right. Take the things you want. Go swipe it from over there. Earn your own cost of food. That's exactly right. Truly right. I have nothing to object to. Compared to that, the dreamlike things my mother said. What I wanted to learn from my mother was not things about heaven and God, but more practical things that could be made to use right away and allow me to survive the day. And of course, I said that. That there's no such thing as heaven. That this was hell, and that was all there was. And when I did, mother made a sad face. You don't understand because you're still a child. When you grow up, I'm sure you'll understand. She said, Heaven does exist, and there is a way to get there. So we have to live for the purpose of doing that. Why? 
Even if there is a heaven, why did I have to live for the sake of it? And being told I was just a child was, of course, not going to convince me. And towards a child, because it's a child, the only way to end a conversation is with violence. Rather, to such a child, a child that doesn't understand anything, forcing them to do such a thing is unreasonable, I thought. And I still do. My mother's coercion really was abnormal. She never showed any sign of it, but I wonder if perhaps my mother was emotionally distressed. Living such a painful life, living such a rock-bottom life, maybe living in such a manner was the only way she could maintain her sense of self. It seems probable. Heaven. That's the key word. For her, that was salvation. If that was the case, as I thought, she was just foolish. I can only think that she became mentally ill from her empty stomach and all the violence. If she had lived until I was a bit older, then rather than use violence like my father, I perhaps could have used logic to convince her, and perhaps release her from that curse. No, I'm sure I would have been able to. I'd have said that that lifestyle of hers was mistaken. I would have been able to convince her. But in reality, I was still just a small child, and she died quite abruptly. We buried her in a crude funeral, and I doubt she was able to get to heaven. Even on the day of the funeral, my father got drunk. You can't help what's dead. What, do you think because if you have a funeral, they'll come back to life? You idiot. My father's opinion, that point of view, I thought must be right as I expected. I didn't feel very sad. Rather, I felt refreshed. For mother, this should be good, I thought. Yes, good. She was finally able to die. She could finally rest easy. That's what I thought. Even so, I really don't think she was able to get to heaven, but... Even just being released from hell should generally be enough.